It's been a while since I've made a video dedicated to trucks. I believe it was over four months ago. And so here we are with another truck related video. The last video I made was about the forgotten performance trucks of the 90s. And this week's upload, essentially I'm adding to that list. The 454SS, Dakota RT, S10SS, and Ram SST were all talked about before. And believe it or not, there's a few more performance trucks from this decade. I mean, I completely left out Ford in that video, which made some of you very upset. But don't worry, Ford will be on this list. I'm sure you know exactly what I'm referring to. If this is your first time watching me, I make videos weekly about the cars or trucks from the 70s up until the early 2000s. Each week is a different decade, and I have played lists that are all sorted out for ease of access. Also, I am not a robot, this isn't an AI generated voice, and just for this video, I will compile some bloopers at the end for you all to hear. Alright, enough of this drawn out intro, let's talk about the forgotten performance trucks of the 90s. We are all aware of the GMC Cyclone. If you aren't, I will briefly talk about it here in the next few minutes. But before the Cyclone, there was the Sonoma GT. These were only offered for the 1992 model year, and essentially this was a sport package. The GTs had the looks of a Cyclone, but without the performance and also that steep price tag. A base GMC Sonoma was around $13,300, the Sonoma GT started around $16,700, and the Cyclone was around $28,000. Thus, these adopt the name Poor Man's Cyclone. Sonoma GT is priced for the younger man, with a younger man's income. Someday Cyclone, but right now, Sonoma GT. So these had no turbocharger and no all-wheel drive, but they did feature GM's newly released Central Point Injection, or CPI. Essentially, this was the next big step from using a carburetor. Now, I'm no mechanic by any stretch of the imagination, but I did hear bad things about these systems. Under the hood was a 4.3 L35 V6 made it into a 4-speed automatic, there was no manual option. 195 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque sent straight to the rear wheels. 0 to 60 in around 7.6 seconds, and honestly, that's not bad at all. Looking at this truck, we can clearly see the cosmetic changes, however, there were some goodies hidden within. Recalibrated Bilstein shocks, torsion bar setup with dual stage leaf springs, performance oriented cooling system, and a special sport chassis. To add, these still retained its payload capacity and towing ratings, meaning you could put this truck to work. Now, would I do that? Probably not. I think especially today, these are great looking trucks that really shouldn't see dirt. The main thing with this truck was the cosmetic changes, and sometimes that can get annoying. It's kind of like all talk and no show, and I totally understand that, but I still think these look awesome. They shared the same front and rear bumpers as the Cyclone, along with the lower door skirts, same black and red striping within the cabin, same bucket seats, just these had no embroidered logo in the headrest, same four spoke steering wheel found in the Typhoon, and these had a unique GT logo plaque on the glove box. Over the one year production run, just 806 Sonoma GTs were ever produced. There were a few color combinations offered, the most common being black with black, and the most uncommon being aspen blue with gray. My favorite has to go to the teal and gray with just 54 produced. There was a low mile example on Bring a Trailer, I believe it had like 6,000 miles on it, that sold for $22,000 about two years ago. Probably the last time one will pop up for sale in that condition. These never really got the recognition just because they were overshadowed by the Cyclone. And speaking of the Cyclone, I do briefly want to talk about it just because they are incredible. Wait, hold on, I believe I said right at the beginning that the Sonoma GT was before the Cyclone. That is actually not true, it's the other way around. But before those two, there was the S10 Cameo. So I guess this is the OG predecessor to the Cyclone. These came out in 1989 and ran until 1991 with only 878 ever produced. And these were pretty similar to the Sonoma GT, I believe the 4.3 at this time made a little less power, but they still did feature sportier suspension upgrades to a base S10, and of course the cosmetic changes. Alright, now for the Cyclone. These were only around for the 1991 model year, there were 3 produced in 1992 if you want to get technical, and over the 1 year production just 2,995 were built. Back in 1991, this was the quickest production truck on the market, even by today's standard they are still some of the fastest trucks out there. 
Car and Driver put out an article that proved that the Cyclone was faster than a $120,000 Ferrari 348TS in most circumstances. Under the hood of this lightweight truck was a turbocharged 4.3 liter good for 280 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque made it into a 4-speed automatic. Certain articles have different 060s but the lowest I saw was 4.6 seconds. GM got the turbocharger from Mitsubishi and attached was an air intercooler. When it comes to upgrades, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There was upgraded head gaskets, intake manifolds, exhaust manifolds, suspension upgrades, and these were the first production trucks to feature a four-wheel anti-lock braking system. There are so many videos and articles about the Cyclone and the Typhoon, and I feel as if many of you guys have seen them. With that said, I didn't want to have an entire entry dedicated to this truck. I'd rather talk about the Sonoma GT just because not many people know about those. And speaking of smaller trucks, was there any sort of sporty Ford Ranger that came out in the 90s? Well, in 1987, Ford introduced the Ranger GT, and due to low sales, they were very short-lived. 1989 would be the end of the GT, so this one just missed the cutoff. In the early 2000s, I want to say 2001, there was the Ranger Thunderbolt, which was also sporty in a sense, but that too just missed the cutoff. And so what we are left with is the Sky Ranger. Unfortunately, this was not a factory creation by Ford, and there were just 17 ever produced. So with this, I'll be very brief just because it's not a production made Ford, and that doesn't seem fair for this video. The original ad says that these were produced by Autocrafters, a short-lived company based in Michigan. And the story goes that the people over at Autocrafters built these and pitched the idea to Ford in hopes to mass produce them. Well, Ford took one quick look at these and said, get that crap out of here. There were two models in mind, Elite and GTS, the only difference being the GTS came with a lower aero body kit. If any of you guys remember, Dodge came out with the Dakota convertible and that was not a hit either. I don't know what they were thinking. From a 2024 perspective, they are unique to say the least. The next entry is a little strange as well. In my other 90s performance truck video, I talked about the 454 SS, one of the first performance focused trucks on the market. Well, a viewer brought to my attention that you could option in the 6.5 turbo diesel in a half ton without the extended cap. It, that was like, there's no way. Well, it's actually true. I'm not exactly sure how long this was an option, but consumers could if they wanted to. Depending on the year, these engines made at least 180 horsepower and 360 pound-feet of torque made it into either a 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic. Adding the 6.5 turbo diesel at least in 1994 was around $3,700. These are super rare just because people would rather have a 25 or 3500 with a diesel for work purposes. I feel as if this video has been all over the place, which it has. Why don't we move on to a more recognizable entry, the Ford SVT Lightning. The Cobra is one of two new limited production vehicles being produced by Ford's special vehicle team for 1993. The second is based on Ford's popular F-150 F-Series pickup. Once again, I have to bring up the 454 SS. That truck came out in 1990. Just three years later, Ford responded with the Lightning. So these adopted that same short bed, single cab configuration. I mean, it was the lightest and it worked. Under the hood was a special version of Ford's 5.8 liter V8 and this motor was good for 240 horsepower and 340 pound-feet of torque. The only transmission offered was a 4-speed auto, which was the same as the 454 come 1991. The engine was based on an existing block and Ford's engineers at the time fitted it with the GT40's intake and heads. It also featured special pistons, tuned manifold, and the throttle body was larger than a stock F-150. From the outside, there were special 17-inch wheels, unique lightning badges, front air dam with fog lamps, color-matched bumper, and a different exhaust outlet. These are all pretty subtle changes, and if I had to pick in terms of looks, the 454 or the Lightning, I think the Lightning just looks a little bit better. The suspension had custom calibrated shocks, front and rear anti-roll bars, special leaf in the rear, and to enhance the chassis, these actually came with the thicker frame rails from the four-wheel drive F250. And on top of all this, just like the Sonoma GT, these retained almost all the hauling and towing capacities of a normal short wheel based F-150. What was the price for one of these back in 93? Well, they cost around $21,600. A regular F-150 base, or XL, was around $13,000. 
car and driver tested both the Lightning and 454, and off the line, they found that the SS was a tenth of a second faster. Now, can we trust car and driver? Probably. I don't see why not. So, 0 to 60 for the Lightning was 7.2 seconds, which is really good. One thing that I don't like is the fact that these had an electronically limited top speed of 110. Seems a little low, but I'm assuming it was added for safety purposes. Each year that the Lightning was out, sales dropped, but the same thing goes for the 454. A little over 11,500 were sold over its three year run. And in 1999, a new Lightning was introduced, one that is probably more popular to most of you, but that will be saved for a 2000s video. Now, I would take one of these first gen Lightnings over the new Lightning any day of the week, but what is more of a tricky question is would you rather have this or the SS? I'm going to have a poll in the community tab for you guys to vote. I'm curious to see what the majority thinks. I honestly believe that this is a fair fight between GM and Ford, so go place your vote. That is going to wrap it up for this week's video. I do sure hope you enjoyed it. Next week's video I believe is going to be in the 80s. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a video that is focused on one car or if there will be like a couple cars within the video. Just We'll just have to see. Uh, with all that said, enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you guys next week. It's been a- <clears throat> So the last video I made was about the forgotten performance- okay. We are all, <clears throat> a base GMC Sonoma was around 13, th <laughs> the Sonoma GT started around, <sighs> under the hood, bleh, <clears throat> let me just try it again, <sighs> take a little break here, now would I do that, prop, now would I prop, now would I do that, okay, they share the sa same black and red striping GT logo plaque on the glove block, blocks, that sold for $22,000, about <laughs> my mouth is dry these really never got the wreck <laughs>